As time goes on, the world's use and demand for energy continues to grow. Currently, about 84% of the world's entire power is supplied by the use of fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, and gas. We all know that there is a limited amount of these natural fuels available on our planet. Now, while they do occur naturally, they can take hundreds of thousands of years to develop. So, we're essentially using up fuels that took thousands of centuries to form. That itself isn't exactly a bad thing, but the increasing demand for energy and the diminishing supply of these sources of energy means that the world isn't a bit of a problem. In times like these, renewable energy products such as wind farms or solar farms look very attractive. We have something huge and similar being set up in Australia as well, so the question is, can Australia provide green energy for the entire world? It can be interesting to take a look at how absurdly fast the world has increased its energy needs and usage. A new study coordinated by CU Boulder says that increases in energy use and population have pushed the Earth towards a new geological epoch called the Anthropocene. Science actually documents the natural drivers of environmental change throughout the past 11,700 years as the Holocene Epoch. But ever since 1950, humans have caused so much change that we've actually altered rivers, oceans, coastlines, lakes, vegetation, soils, chemistry, and the climate of our planet. In the past 70 years, human beings have exceeded the energy consumption of the entire preceding 11,700 years, and largely thanks to the combustion of fossil fuels. This massive increase in energy consumption has also caused a dramatic increase in pollution, human population, industrial activity, and of course, climate change. It's particularly important during times like these that we focus our energies and resources on the development of a renewable energy project that simply eradicates the problems mentioned earlier. Since the sun does not stop throwing light, the wind doesn't exactly stop flowing, and so do the rivers, we have essentially endless sources of energy on our hands. What makes it even better is that, unlike the burning of fossil fuels, this method of producing energy produces nothing that harms the environment. In fact, as we go on in this video, you will find that projects such as the one in Australia actually produce byproducts such as hydrogen and ammonia. Now, not only are these products environmentally green, they actually have massive commercial value. Understandably, these aspects only make such a project even more feasible. So how big is the Australian Green Energy Project and what benefits can we hope to achieve from it? The project is called the Western Green Energy Hub and it's expected to produce as much as 50 gigawatts of wind and solar energy. Mind you that this amount of electricity is 12 times the amount of the current West Australian power grid. So it won't be wrong to say that a project like this could meet the entire country's energy needs. These plants will be installed over more than 15,000 square kilometers of land, which is about half the size of Belgium. According to the international group that's responsible for planning the project, it would cost about 100 billion Australian dollars or 75 billion US dollars. The first production is expected to begin from the start of the next decade, which frankly is a considerable time from today. But the time and money being poured into this project are bound to yield long-term results. Furthermore, other side projects within this move are expected to start functioning from as early as 2023. The new Australian project would yield as much as 3.5 million tonnes of green hydrogen or 20 million tonnes of green ammonia in a year for domestic use, as well as export purposes. But why is it that we're talking about ammonia and hydrogen? Although these are simply the byproducts that we receive as a result of producing green energy, their importance should not be underestimated. It is estimated that by 2050, the green hydrogen market would exceed an amount of $2.5 trillion. To put that into perspective, the GDP of Canada is around $1.6 trillion. We know that ammonia and hydrogen are valuable results of this renewable energy, but what is it that we can hope to use it for? And if it's exported, who's going to buy it? Professor Peter Newman, who is a sustainability expert, says that this plan seems to tick all the boxes. According to the professor, the power produced from this project would be equivalent to Australia's entire current energy capacity. But they're not going to simply feed the power into the grid. Professor Newman explained this situation in detail. The power is going to be making hydrogen and ammonia, which are desperately needed to help heavy transport, the big trucks, the big trains, planes and ships, he said. He also referred to ammonia as the emerging solution to making heavy transport greener. 
The hydrogen produced would be used for processing minerals, which is an energy-intensive practice that traditionally relied on fossil fuel. It's safe to say that the project sounds remarkably good on paper. So, are there any sort of limitations being expected right now? Since the green energy project is only expected to start functioning from the onset of the next decade, there are a number of unknowns that can only be determined as time goes on. Apart from the environmental approvals, the real challenge for a massive project like the Western Green Energy Hub is going to be finding buyers for the ammonia and hydrogen. Now, it's a little too early to tell, but most of the hydrogen from the hub will likely be exported by ship. Exporting across water means that this product is bound to become quite costly, especially when compared with the local output in even the most expensive hydrogen producers like Japan and South Korea. A lot of insight regarding this dilemma was provided by Martin Tengler, Bloomberg NEF's lead hydrogen analyst. According to Mr. Martin, it will all fall down to how much demand Japan and North Korea are going to have by the time this project picks up pace. It will also likely depend on how much ammonia and hydrogen are produced and supplied domestically in these countries. The group that is currently proposing the project in Western Australia says that the project will be completed in phases. According to them, a project like this is the best way to take advantage of high wind speeds and massive open land areas in the country. The vast flatlands allow for optimal solar energy farming, while windy areas affirm that the area is most suitable for wind farms. In northern Australia, the $20 billion Sun Cable project is also set to build a 14 gigawatt solar farm and an energy storage facility of 33 gigawatt hours. According to data from Bloomberg NEF, this is currently the world's biggest planned renewable project as well. This specific project is expected to reach a financial close in 2023. This will allow the results to start pouring in as soon as 2023. However, once the entire West Green Energy Hub project is complete, the uses and benefits it brings can be astounding. Regarding the Energy Hub, the Hydrogen Industry Minister of Western Australia had some details and comments to share. Here is what he said in a statement. The Western Green Energy Hub is a truly massive proposal that would see Western Australia home to one of the world's largest renewable energy projects. Our state is perfectly positioned to lead the global renewable hydrogen industry, delivering a strong economic future for WA and becoming a major contributor to global decarbonisation. Renewable energy projects do not come without downsides of their own. For instance, installing wind farms means understanding that wind can be inconsistent at times. Although particularly windy areas can almost guarantee a certain amount of supply over, say, a year. Similarly, as observed from the 75 billion USD price tag, both solar and wind farms can be expensive to install. However, when we look at the advantages somewhere into the future, they perhaps far outweigh any possible downsides. What do you think about that? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have a good day.